years ago when you came to church, people would wear what they called their Sunday best. And their Sunday best was that set of clothes that you used for special occasions and for Sunday morning going to church. And that was the only time you wore those things. In my first 10 years of ministry or pastoring churches, I always wore a three-piece suit. I had a shirt. And some of you are looking, really? I, I, had, I, had the, uh, I had the shirt and the tie and the vest buttoned up and the coat on. And I kept them on the whole service. Even during the summer, even if it was 90 degrees out, that's what I wore. <laughs> now... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Please, no comments. <laughs> now, if my mother were still alive and saw me like this, she would come up here, grab me by the ear, haul me home, and make me put on a suit. She'd probably even turn over in her grave right now. But I remember back to my, speaking of my mother, I remember back to my home church, Holmes United Methodist Church, was about five miles from our dairy farm. And back in the early to middle 70s, the young people in the church, things started to change as far as what they wore to church. And one Sunday, two of the teenagers in the church that were helping with the offering took the offering, and they were dressed exactly like I am. They have just a nice shirt on, a pair of shorts, and a pair of sandals on. Well, my mother thought it was the end of the world. When we got done with the worship service, we drove to Grand Forks to have dinner and then visit my grandpa and then come back all the way there, all the way back. And for the next several days, she talked about how horrible and disrespectful that was that they wore sandals and shorts to church. And finally, she calmed down, probably around Wednesday. <laughs> and I walked in the house, and we were going to sit down for dinner, and I said, Hey, Mom, what do you think the ushers are going to wear this summer? Well, she started all over again, and my dad looked at me like he wanted me to sleep in the barn that night. But it really was important to her. Now, if a person thinks that you should be dressed up in your best for Sunday morning, I have no problem with that. I respect that. If a person thinks you should be able to dress casual and come to church and still be able to worship the Lord, I have no problem with that. I respect that. Because I don't think God really cares. God is more concerned about how we clothe our hearts and our minds. And when we come to Colossians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul tells us what we need to clothe our lives with and what we need to get rid of. Maybe what we need to just throw away. And so we're going to look at those two things in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. We're going to begin with the throwaway clothes, what we need to get rid of. And the Apostle Paul gives us a list. Now, when you read through the book of Acts and Corinthians, and then you read through the epistles, I get the distinct impression Paul liked lists. And so he begins here. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. What Paul was saying here, you had a former life at one time, before you came to know Christ. And he said you used to live a certain way. He says, get rid of that. Put it to death. And what he means by put it to death, so it doesn't come back. Don't invite it back into your life ever, ever again. 
And then he goes on and says these words in verse 8. But you, <clears throat> excuse me, but you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. And he adds to them. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. And have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. In the original language, the words must also rid yourselves carries with it the idea of taking off a set of clothes and literally throwing them away and not putting them back on. And he gives us a very good list here. First thing he talks about is anger. Anger is when you get mad and stay mad. It's interesting that Jesus said, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Why did he say that? Because Jesus was saying, if you're angry with someone, take care of it right away. Don't let it sit there. Get rid of it as fast as you can because it will bring other things into your life. Now the Apostle Paul also said, get rid of rage. Rage is when you are so upset with someone that you say something or do something without thinking. And you will always regret that. You will always wish you could go back and maybe erase the words you wrote down or take back the words you said. And they were done in rage. He says malice. Malice is when you want to see something bad happen to somebody and you decide to help it along. <coughs> Slander. And we all know what that is. Words you use to destroy another person's reputation. You lie about that person. You tear that person down. And then filthy language. Not only meaning here crude and rude language, but also words that hurt or words of deception. There's the old phrase, you try to pull the wool over somebody else's eyes. We are to take these off and not bring them back into our life. When I pastored in Claremont and Hecla, in the town of Claremont, we did not have door-to-door -door garbage pickup. In that town, we had, on the edge of town, we had four dumpsters. And you would take, every person would take their garbage to those four dumpsters. And anything that you wanted to get rid of. So there were times, uh, there were couches sitting there, there were old chairs sitting there. Uh, you'd look into the dumpster, there'd be maybe an old baby stroller in there. You know, maybe kitchen appliances, whatever the people didn't want. And it was close to the road. You could drive by and you could see who was there and you could see what they were throwing away. Well, that made it convenient because we had some people in town that we called dumpster divers. And they would go out there and check it out. And, and there was actually one time, um, the United Methodist Church in Claremont, we tried to help individuals like that, trying to you know, make sure people didn't have to do that. Well, one day my wife was cleaning out the house. I don't know if it was spring cleaning, but she had these two garbage cans filled with stuff from the house. And she said, take these to bins and dump them in. So I put them in the back of the pickup and I back up to uh, the one bin and I dump the can in and I look and then I dump the other can in and I look. There's my favorite tennis shoes. <laughs> and I'm going, what in the world? And without thinking, I crawl over into the dumpster and I bend over and I start fine and I come up and I stand up like this and I got those two shoes and the car drives by. <laughs> and I know the people in the car, and they know me, and I'm going, oh, great, this coming week, I'm going to hear the night by this pastor was dumpster diving in Claremont. And sure enough, later that week, I went down for coffee, and one of the guys came up, and there were about 10 of us at the table, and I said, say, hey, pastor, we want to buy you coffee today, and we're going to take a collection for a pair of shoes for you. <laughs> Well, I took those shoes, I took them back home, and I went into the house, and I set them right by the door where they had been before. And I go back outside, 
and I only get a few feet from the door, and all of a sudden I hear my daughter yell, Mom, Dad brought the shoes back. <laughs> I didn't even go back in the house. <laughs> Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Because we become comfortable with things. Those shoes were comfortable to me. And even though that item no longer was any good, even though it looked horrible, even though my wife was embarrassed, I went out public with them, I was comfortable with them. Well, that's what the Apostle Paul is warning us about here. Do not become comfortable with these things. We can become comfortable with being upset with people. We can become comfortable with tearing people down. We can become comfortable with some of the things from our old life. And that's why the Apostle Paul says, throw away those things, take them off, get them off, and do not go and pick them back up again. Leave them by the side of the road. Leave them in the dumpster because you now belong to Christ. And do not bring them back into your life. Now Paul tells us, get rid of those things. What I love about Scripture is that any time Scripture tells you to get rid of something, in the next few verses it usually tells you what to put back on. Here's what you can add to your life. So Paul says these words in verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, and he uses this term, clothe yourselves with Clothe yourselves with. In other words, he's saying, put these things on. And the idea here is we put them on not to take them off. The idea with the Greek word is to keep them on. To continually clothe ourselves with these particular things and wrap ourselves around or wrap ourselves in these things. Our heart and our mind and our whole being. Now, I could read the verses here, but... As I said, Paul loves lists, and so I'm just going to list the things here. This is what he says in these verses. He says, clothe yourselves with, and then he says, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. I look at those and I go, those are characteristics of the heart and mind. And they are very similar to Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness. So clothe yourself with those things. And then he goes on. And some of these are actions we do to other people or to one another. Bear with each other. Forgive each other. Put on love. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Be thankful. Grow together in the Lord. And everything you do, do in the name of the Lord. That's a great set of clothes. You put those on, and you're putting on Christ. Because remember what Paul said at the beginning? You have died with Christ, and your life is now hidden with Him. And then he says, the former things you used to do have nothing to do with Him, but have everything to do with these things. Put them back on. Take Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 11. Find a copy machine one somewhere. Copy off those verses 5 to 11. Put it up on your refrigerator. And once a week, ask yourself this question. Have I put these on? Have I gotten rid of these? And have I put these on? In preparation for Sunday morning. In preparation for Monday and Tuesday. What happens when we put these things on? Well, let me go back to the story of the shoes. I brought them back into the house. I put them by the door there. I come back, and shock of all shocks, they're gone again. Now, to this day, I do not know what happened to those shoes. I believe maybe she took a butcher knife to them and really took care of them. Maybe they are buried out in the backyard in Claremont behind a parsley somewhere. But I never found them again. So I went and I bought new ones. Uh, let me define new. 
uh, on sale at Walmart. <laughs> but I bought new tennis shoes. And once I got them on, I started wearing them around. I liked them. I said, hey, these look pretty good. And my wife's looking at me like, well, duh. And when I went out into public, other people noticed, hey, I like those shoes. Those are kind of neat. When we put these things on, when we put on the things of Christ, we look different. We look new compared to our old life. And people take notice of that. That's why Paul says this in chapter 3, to put these on. He's talking about being a witness to the world around us. When we put on these particular clothes, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, all the other things listed there. We become a new person. And we have a great witness to those around us. What are we wearing today? What are we going to wear tomorrow? Hopefully, we take Paul's advice. Therefore, as God's chosen people, clothe yourselves with these things. Let us pray. Father, you've called us to be different than the world. You've called us to leave behind any uh, residue from our old life. You've called us to get rid of those things and to clothe ourselves, to put on these clothes of righteousness. Father, may we do that every day. As we do that, we become this witness for you. We pray this in your name.